statistics unit one test what to study all right not on every single thing here is going to be completely inclusive everything that is in your chapter is um, potentially something that you need to study but I'm also this is just kind of a list I made up for you to kind of get the highlights for you all right so the first thing I want to show you is if you go to today's calendar which in this year, this is what it is. So hit the review and extra credit notes. I have a couple extra credit things here. Um, the extra credit things I did notice are different. And so because they're different, I'll offer 25 points for this one because it is different than the other one. And so if you want to do both of them, that's 25 points. And then this also is 25 points, the other extra credit one. So that's for extra credit. Let's start off there because they are different. Um, the one through five actually added some different questions. So 25 points for both if you want to do those. Uh, as far as the one that you're, that you're required to do that you're allowed to be doing in class is this review. And the review here, um, basically you can download it and, and annotate it on your tablet or you can print it and, and take notes and upload it or you can just take notes. Um, but it has every single thing that we've talked about and all, and all the calculator commands, so it's very helpful. At the very end, you'll see it has uh, 10 questions for multiple choice and, and then also the explanations on there. And then it's got two for response or one for response questions, so make sure you do those as well. Okay, and then you will... Um, you will upload this to this to this spot right here where it's got your upload. Um, there's a bunch of other different little things that gives you kind of some different different things to study here. How to do means innovation. If you don't know how to find means innovation, I've got these are the different examples as far as what you would need to know for the test. If you if you don't know when both of them are unknown, we talked about it in class, but that's helpful. Um, and then. I'm just going to go over also just kind of what I think you should know. So with normal models, if it says on the normal model, and I will tell you, everyone has this one on, on the, one of the problems on their test, and it says completely label. When it tells you to label them, you need to do a couple things. All right, so you need the title, the N for normal means derivation, the label, the mean, the standard deviation, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and then 68, 95, 997. So just a real quick example. If it says um, I have a mean of five and a standard deviation of two, I'm going to do N, five, two, label this and have five, seven, nine, 11, three, sorry, <laughs> one, and negative one. Uh, let's say this is seconds. And let's say time passed since sun up or something. I don't know, whatever we're doing. So, and then of course the 68, 95, and 997. And that would be completely. Okay, solving normal models. Um, the, the four aspects, of course, you're gonna need to draw a picture with the normal model. And I have you just labeling if it's shaded area and, you're try and you know the shaded area, let's say that's 10% and why. Um, and then the mean versus if you know the value, let's say you know the value is 10 and this is, I don't know, this is my question mark percent or Y percent or whatever. And then the mean, you'll still put the mean. So that's how the draw, the probability that X is equal to, or X is less than or greater than. So this will be either less than or greater than, um, for Z, same thing. If it's less than or greater than whichever way the car, um, the curve is shaded, and the next one is going to be work it out. You're either going to put in the chart. You're either going to solve this z-score problem, because remember, that's observed minus mean divided by standard deviation. And if you're doing the chart, you need to solve that problem and put what the probability of z is. If you're doing a calculator, you just need to put your normal CDF or inverse norm, whichever one you're using. And you need to put all of the labels that come out on that and make sure you label your answers. Uh, the answer is going to be about whatever your answer is. And then the stem of the question, um, if you're asked to describe distributions, you're going to, uh, I call it cuss and compare. So if you're asked to compare distributions, let me get to the cuss part and then the compare, you need to make sure you use comparative language. 
So larger, smaller, um, etc. You can't just say I, I am five four and he is six four. I am shorter than he is at five four and six four. Uh, describe distributions: a center, if it's symmetric, mean; if it's not symmetric, median. Unusual features, gaps and outliers. Say if there aren't gaps and outliers. Say if there's no unusual features. Shape: skewed left, skewed right. Remember, skewed left is um, the outliers to the left. That's skewed left. Remember, skewed right would be outliers to the right. And symmetric is approximately symmetric. Remember, if you put a blanket over it, it's mostly symmetric. Uh, spread, five number summary, which is, I'll get to in just a second. Um, sorry, spread, you use the standard deviation. If it's symmetric, use the five number summary. If it's skewed or outlier, so actually you're going to use for the spread, you're going to use your IQR specifically in this five number summary, which is your Q3 minus Q1. You don't have to put your whole five number summary for the spread. Um, the five number summary is here. It is my minimum Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. Uh, remember with the distribution, you want to be specific. You're going to have to put the values and the context. So you have to say the center is at, uh, the center is the median at 30, which is greater than the second graph at 20, 25 or something like that. So make sure, and make sure you put your values, centimeters, inches, things like that. Um, know how to graph a box plot, know how to interpret a graph uh, of a box plot know how to find the outlier of a box plot, um, things like that. I have videos on all of those things. Uh, outliers, there's three ways to find an outliers. Of course, this Q1 minus 1.5, oh, QR. Yeah, and this here's my IQR. Um, Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Or you can find the mean plus two standard deviations, mean minus two standard deviations, of course. Um, and Or plus three, because this is considered unusual and this is considered very unusual. At this point, you just need to make sure you choose one of them and show your work to do so. You can use any method when appropriate. Of course, if it's skewed data, you want to use the median, which would be this one up here. If it's symmetric, you kind of have your choice if you're given the data. Usually, you use the mean if it's symmetric, but it, you, can, you can choose either one. Transforming data, remember, if you add and subtract to your data, so if I have a, a list of data, one, three, five, um, my mean and my median is this, my... Um, and then if I am going to add two to the data, so I have three, five, seven, notice my mean and median and all the positions change, but the spread, see, five minus one, seven minus three, I still am four. Versus if I multiply, if I have one, three, five again, and I multiply by two, I get two, six, 10. If you notice the spread, 10 minus two is eight, Five minus one is four. The spread also changed. Um, not only in my positions changed, my spread changed, both changed. With the graphs, uh, you got all of these different graphs, histogram, stem leaf, box plot, mosaic, bar graph, dot plot, cumulative relative frequency graph. Um, make sure you know how to interpret all of these things. I, I didn't include z-scores on here. Yes, make sure you know how to get a z-score. A z-score is observed minus mean divided by standard deviation. Um, if you're using the chart, make sure you know how to go from the chart and the z-score, right, to the percentage or from the percentage to the z-score. And um, that's kind of a quick summary. So it, it, just make sure you go through all of the things that I have showed you on the review and Math Excel if there's anything else. But that's what I've got for you. Oh, on the test, let me just show you. You'll have 11 multiple choice, but only 10 count. But if you get all 11 right, that's 110%. So it's extra credit. So if you get a, a 10 out of 11, that's 100%. A 9 out of 11, that's 100, that's a 90%, et cetera. And there's, uh, you'll have 22 minutes for 11 questions. And then you have two FRQ questions. And you'll have 22 minutes for that. So that's 44 minutes. And you want to make sure you come into class. Um, and you'll need your laptop. If you don't have a laptop, please tell me ahead of time. I'll make sure you have one. Uh, and I always have backup laptops. And you're going to start, when you start your test, you're going to, um, you're going to go ahead and actually, the first part is our FRQ. And you'll see, I'll put a timer for 22 minutes on the board. As soon as you're finished with the FRQ, you can turn it in and you can start your MC. So that's fine. 
And when you, so then you'll do this on paper and then you'll turn it in and then you'll do your MC and that's on College Board. So what I tell people, because College Board sometimes take a, takes a bit, is I tell them as soon as they get in, I tell them to go ahead and do their MC on College Board, not to do the, excuse me, just to log in. And then they just put their computer under their desk, they do their FRQ so that when they come back, they just, College Board probably will kick them out by then, but maybe not because it's 20 minutes, but at least you're logged onto your computer and it won't take long to get the MC up. Um, so then you'll get your MC up and that's again, as I said, 22 minutes and you'll submit it. You won't be able to see the answers until the following day, but then at that point you'll get answers and explanations. Um, as far as your desk, they will be in rows and you'll see different numbers on the board. You'll have a, a desk test number and I'll send that out ahead of time so you know what your test number is, but you need to make sure that's the seat you sit in and then ask you on your test what your test number is. I don't have you put your name on there because we do great anonymous. I have you put your test number and your ID number. Make sure you include that. When you walk into the room to the left where I have the cabinets where the calculators are, they'll open those up and that's where your phones and watches and any other electronic devices will go. Um, you'll have to use my calculator my calculators will be cleared, so there's going to be no help on them or if anything's like that. If you use a TI-84 or something else, you may use your TI-84. You just must come in before class, and you must show me that it's cleared. And then after class, you have to make sure it's cleared. You can't bring anything into the test. Uh, you do have the Z-score charts that I've been allowing you to use in class. You can use the Z-score charts if you are um, someone that wants to use one, you'll just come back and get one from me once once you're seated. So that should kind of tell you, but um, if you are able to come to class a little early because you have first period off or it's the first period or something like that, it's a really good idea just to get there because when you walk in, you're just gonna, you don't need anything. I'll have, if you have a pencil, um, what I recommend for you to do when you walk into the class is it, have a pencil in hand and have your computer in hand and that's it. Don't worry about anything else that's turned in. I'll, I'll deal with that the following day. But you're going to have a pencil in hand and computer in hand and just put your bag. You're going to put your bag um, and I guess your phone in hand because you're going to put your fa phone in the cabinet. You're going to have your pencil and computer for the testing and you're going to put your bag at the side of the room. All right. Um, I do have pencils on the desk and uh, or pen. doesn't matter. Pencil or pen. I don't care. So I'll have a pencil or pen on the desk for you to use if you want to use that. I will also have scrap paper for you. If you, and then for the, for the FRQ, I do have just, I have about a third of the sheet of, like question one, if it says three questions, you have about a third of the sheet for each question. If you need more paper, please ask for more paper. Don't have to squish. I have more paper for you. So um, I hope you guys do well, study well, and if you have any questions, let me know.